Hi there everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thank you for joining me. This is a quick sketch today, looking at capturing a, a sort of focal point which has got a dramatic bit of light and shadow on it. Um, it's references up here, it's um, across the canal in St Neot, which is where I live. And it's something I've, I've sketched a few times before, including a video up here about sketching outside. This is a different photo. This is, um, as you can see, a t photo taken at or near dusk. We've got this lovely light sort of streaming across the building. So how are we going to capture that? Well, we're going to start with a, a lovely loose pen drawing, of course. So I've got my uh, waterproof ink in this fountain pen. Just called the ink is called Carbon X ink. And let's just catch these sort of major details. Things like these. Chimney pots are a great to grab. We don't have to worry about being super accurate and we can specifically make our lines a bit wonky, a bit filled with character. And then come back and capture our little windows. And we don't need to take all the details. So what we're going to do today is a really quick pen sketch then our colours, then we'll come back with some more pen and we'll add a few more details on top, like these high contrast trees in the front, for example. And why not just pop this car in as well? I've done a video recently on how to draw cars. It's all about just capturing the shapes. And just accepting, you know, you're trying to represent this car. You're not trying to do the world's best car drawing. So just represent it. And today, this really loose drawing is plenty for me. These buildings can sort of just disappear off into the ether over there. Then we just try and get a couple of these background buildings in. They're not easy to see because they're uh, behind the tree. The tree's going to come later, as I just said, so don't worry about it. Just get the rough shapes in. And the same for all these sort of even more backgrounding houses. And then this one in the foreground. We'll try a little bit harder to be sort of accurate, but it's still a really loose and sketchy drawing. And then we've got the front of the canal that sort of comes around. Little steps down here. We can just suggest those steps with a few horizontal lines. It comes and it cuts off the uh, bottom of those car tyres, then we're on to our grass. Let's just get a couple of grass textures in and that, that is our sketch done. So now how are we going to do light and dark in this scene? Well let's start by setting the scene with a nice sky. So actually I'm going to go for a bit of a, a fallow blue I think, just getting my fallow blue a little bit cleaner. Had a little bit of yellow in which would have given us a, a rather different sky. Just going to use all one brush today, one my size 8 round brush. And we're going to be nice and loose as ever with our colours. And just painting around these chimneys, but doing it quickly. And imagine you're out there sketching and the light is going. Well, you don't have forever to get those details, do you? So you've got to accept a little bit of the sketchy quality in your colours to capture enough of that light and have enough time to really get the interest in. So there we go, that is our, our sky. That's enough for that. Maybe just pull out little bits of texture with a clean brush and even drop in little intense bits of colour in just a couple of places. Next we've got this area of light 
Well, let's take a really, because it is quite golden, isn't it? So we're just going to take this Indian yellow. And we're going to wash that all over this house. And that is the light. So the first thing we're doing is very much painting the light. We get this light in a few places as well. We can even get it as an underpainting to the roof and the side of this castle. Just look anywhere where that sort of golden hour light is falling. And this underpainting of lovely yellow, rich yellow, will go there. Touching a few places up here. And then we can come in with some richer tones. So why don't we just get a little bit of indigo, dark blue. We can start just touching in areas which don't have that light pooling over them. Just gonna leave the chimneys for now. Okay, everywhere else though. So we've kind of got this two-tone drawing now. And from the two tones we can start now to build up different colours. So the shadow we're going to make um, out of indigo on this side and a bit of perylene, perylene violet, violet, perylene violet and a little bit of quinacridone sienna and just keep changing those variations of mix until we've got a fairly neutral colour. You can see that fairly neutral dark. And then we just want to catch those shadows now. Just try and get that sharp line of shadow because this is a really well defined shadow on this building. And then just under the roof line as well. And down this side of the building. And of course this shadow continues, doesn't it? We can leave a little white gap in places between these buildings just to separate them. And the same as we go back. But we can also in places join up these shadows. And underneath the car gets a bit of shadow. So these shadow colours we use everywhere we find our shadows. Just have a little look how the shadow falls off these chimneys as well. And then we've kind of got blocks of colour we can add in here. Again, leaving little patches of light. But not forgetting that the shadows will be on the roads. Little by little, we're building up these textures here but also by leaving little gaps, little bits of white, little bits of light, we've got a little bit of extra interest coming through. We've got the same shadow here and round here. So what is next? Well, next is adding a little bit more punch in a couple of places. So we've got these roofs, which are obviously a nice dark color. So a little bit of our indigo again with a little bit of neutral tint just to deepen it even more. And then we're going to bring that into the roofs and get our really dark areas as well. Now this roof is the, the warmest, the least dark of all the roofs. So we're just going to leave it with a little bit of a discontinuous edge and come back to it very shortly. And so now, 
just with a clean brush we can come back and move that around we can add a little bit of warmth so this is just a little bit of cracked down sienna just bringing warmth and that light which we've got pooling around and we can use that same quinacridone sienna just coming up the chimney as well and even in this door just as an extra touch going to warm up a few areas in here as well before coming back with our dark dark and just making sure we've captured some of these darkest areas. So all these windows have got a little bit of darkness buried in them. And then these little edges as well. This building, it's almost like the, the windows are the only light bit, so we can just catch these little shapes. As we go back, they're still very dark, but they got a bit more warmth, so we had a little bit of that Crenacridone Sienna. And then when we come to our cars, the same deal with these, these windows being really dark. Okay, now we've got some interesting things going on in the front here. So we've got a kind of top edge which is a little bit darker as it curls over. Then we've got this kind of warmth coming through just below that. And even though it's in shadow, the warmth kind of continues back here. But then underneath it's more neutral again. So you're just touching in all those different colours. We've got lovely variations going on already with very little effort. Just little blocks of colour here and there. Okay. Now we can dry off our brush, a little bit of clean water, and we can start touching in a bit of variation into some of these washes. Let's just keep that brush cleaning off. Do you see how we just can touch in while it's still wet and suddenly lift out light or just make things have that little bit of extra texture. Okay, and then let's have another think. The darkest darks, where are we going to find those? So we've got this door. Some of these windows. Certainly these windows. There's a couple of window details that I've left out in the back here. And then, what we've not really touched so far, which may be a bit of an oversight from me, is these lovely greens in the foreground. So we need a, a nice light yellow to catch this light. And then that kind of washes into a, a deeper green where this shadow is. And it's the same story, isn't it? With light and shadow, even in this even in this grass area and we can bring it up to meet in a few places the wall because that's what happens in the actual photo in there and in real in reality then before we move on let's think about where these trees are going to come in and we can start just adding in those sort of green tones even a few little flecks here and there, especially up here. Just a few bits of colour which we're going to bring out heavily with a bit of ink in a minute. There is very little green, remember, so just little touches, suggestive touches things which will enhance the, the line work. Okay. 
And the last thing that we can actually do, if we grab something sharp, so I'm just going to grab a small palette knife, we can scratch in some light. So going up where we've added these dark colours, we can scratch in areas where we're going to have the lightest colours. Okay. This is kind of picking out where our, our tree stumps are going to be. And this doesn't always work, I've got to say, it doesn't always work. It has to be the right depth of colour, the right dryness, that pressure. But here it's worked quite well. So, next phase, just let it dry. I'm going to use my hairdryer. And then we're going to come back in with some bold pen work to really bring this all together. So, Let's start with this sort of relatively background bunch of bushes or trees and it's all a lot of stuff going on and then it kind of just peeks out the top here. Just getting this idea of branching patterns and down here it's very busy. So make it very busy. Looser and looser as we go up. And just join these lines into the, the surroundings as well. Then we've got this other tree which we sort of mapped out with some scratches. It goes all the way up. It's got two main branches and then lots of little branching bits above that. very much overlapping this other tree. There's lots of shadow coming along here. Then we've got this other little tree. Lots of little bits of grass in the foreground as well. And we've got this chappy coming down. Let's get this sort of leaf-like shapes, suggestions of leaves as it tumbles down. A weeping willow, I think it is. Then over here, similar idea, a couple of these branching trees. Do you see how all that stuff in the background is just sort of fading away because of all this bold detail in the foreground? So all we needed to focus on was that light and shadow, which is what we did. And then the contrast is coming from these fascinating trees. Where we've got these patches of green, it lets us just do these sort of mad lines. It's just something natural with a bit of tone to hold it all together. And just get a little bit of hatching in to make sure we've got the idea of shadow because there's all this shadow coming across and now we can have a look into the background and decide where do we want a little bit more detail to just be pulled out can still lift details forward. So remember we had these pools of light in the background to make these windows, well we can ink them in a bit as well now. And then we've got in front of all these buildings we've got this lovely um, sort of metalwork which comes in front of the car as well. And we 
can add some little brick details. All just quick movements. And we're pretty much there, aren't we? So all we did was this initial really loose pen work. Colours then just focused on the light and the shade. And then we can come back in and provide that heavy contrast with these silhouetted trees and create a much more interesting and perhaps dramatic scene. And there you go, there is my quick urban sketch. It took about 20 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, please do let me know in the comments. Um, and if you do enjoy my channel, please like and subscribe. And it's lovely having you along, so thank you for watching.